Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 3, Electrochemistry, focusing on the subtopic of 3.3 .3 Electrolytic Cell, part 3 of this video. So in this video, we're going to look into the use of electrolysis, which is purification and electroplating. And we're also going to look into the meaning of the Faraday's first law of electrolysis, as well as doing some calculation regarding the concept that we have learned in part G. So without any further ado, let us start. So, for the use of electrolysis, which is the purification, uh, the experimental setup is going to be something like this. The impure copper is going to be placed at the anode here. Meanwhile, the pure copper, which is the pure metal, will be placed at the cathode. And the solution that we are going to be using is the same uh, solution as the same species as in the electrolyte here. So copper, copper as anode, copper as cathode, therefore copper sulfate solution. So it needs to be in the same species. Alright, so purification basically means that we divide the species, the pure ones with the pure one and unpure one to be, this, uh, to be sludged down. Maksudnya kita mengasingkan yang yang mana kita nak yang tulen saja yang mana konsep ni dinamakan sebagai penulenan. So by the end of this experiment, you're gonna see that it's gonna be something like this. So the cathode will be uh, full with the pure yang tulen, pure copper. Meanwhile here, some of the impurities will be go down and the copper electrode will get thinner and thinner and thinner. So in order to explain this, um, you will you will you know that the electrolyte that we that we will be using is copper sulfate solution. So sulfate two plus will be attracted to the anode as well as the water, which because it is copper sulfate solution. So there is H two O here, and at cathode, which is a negative electrode will be attracting copper to plus and water. So, logically, uh, copper to plus will be selected because it is lower in the electrochemical series. So, copper to plus is lower and hence it will be selected for discharge. However, at anode, both of these will not be selected. Instead, the copper will be the one that is involved in the redox reaction because copper is an active electrode. So, copper will dissolve to form copper 2 plus ion. From copper solid, it will become copper 2 plus aqueous, uh, releasing 2 mole of electron. And at the cathode, the copper 2 plus, which is in the solution here, and which has a more positive uh, SRP value, uh, will be selected for reduction at cathode. Okay. So, as far as you can see here, copper 2 plus is selected instead of water. Alright, so these two equations will be happening, which is the copper solid to copper 2 plus aqueous, and copper 2 plus aqueous is going to be copper solid. So, this happens at the purification processes. So, for electroplating, it basically a process that deposits a thin layer of coating to a metal surface by the use of electrolysis. So the experimental setup that we will be imagining is to be something like this, where the object to be electroplated, the object yang akan dislaputi akan diletakkan di bahagian cathode, and uh, the object is is used to that is used to coat the object is placed at the anode. Yang mana kat sini adalah perak, argentum or silver. So our electrolyte here need to be the same as our anode. For example, Ag metal here, so we, we will be using silver nitrate. So our L naught is silver bar, noted as AG, and our cathode is iron spoon. Alright, so object yang murah tadi, a cheap object, will be covered with an expensive coating, which is the perak, argentum. So by the end of the experiment, you're going to see that the silver bar L naught will become thinner and thinner and thinner because it got dissolved into forming Ag plus aqueous ion. Meanwhile, at cathode, 
you will be seeing that the iron spoon will be coated into uh, it will be coated with the silver metal all right so in order to explain this better let us look into the explanation here in terms of the equation so uh, the cathode here will be attracting cation which is Ag plus and H2O meanwhile the anion here will be attracting NO3 minus and H2O um, uh, and H2O species however the what really happening at the anode is the silver here silver metal here is acting as an active electrode so it's going to take part in the redox reaction so silver solid going to be dissociated to form Ag plus aqueous ion and producing one mole of electron all right so other electrode then carbon graphite and platinum okay this three is known as the inner electrode other than these three carbon graphite and platinum all of them are active electrode so for example silver or copper so all of this we're going to take part in the chemical reaction all right so when it takes part in the chemical reaction the solid here will be forming ions meanwhile uh, at the cathode we have two options we have silver ions to form silver solid and h2o uh, undergo reduction to form hydrogen gas okay but as you know we will need to take the more positive to be taken into reduction at cathode and this is further verified that ag plus here is lower and easier to be discharged compared to h2o that is why ag plus is selected to be discharged so the equation of and not going to be something like this and the equation at cathode to be like this now we're going to look into the faraday's law so according to faraday's first law of electrolysis it basically says that, that the quantity or the mass of the substance form at an electrode is directly proportional to the quantity of the electric charge supplied so we can say that mass is directly proportional to the quantity of the electric charge where q equal to the electric charge in coulombs and m equal to mass of the substance discharged so when q increases when the charge when the electric charge increases the mass that we're going to get will be increases as well and we can find q by looking into this formula which is the electric current multiplied by the product of time so q is the electric charge in coulomb i is the current in the unit of ampere and time here need in the it needs to be in the unit of second so if the question asks you give you in minutes you have to convert it into second first all right and at this point you also be learning about faraday's constant where one faraday refers to the charge of one mole of electron and it also refers to 96,500 coulomb all right so you have understood about the first law of electrolysis of the faraday now let us look into the example so for example one we have an aqueous solution of copper sulfate which is uh, written as here uh, using a current of 0 0.15 ampere for the period of five hours we have to calculate the mass of the copper deposited at the cathode so just now we have understood that the mass is directly proportional to the electric charge so we can find the electric charge here first uh, by relating it with the current and the time taken for the reaction to occur so electric charge q is equal to it where i is given as 0 0.150 and time here needs to be in the unit of second but here given here is the in the unit of hour so hour we need to change it into second first so five hours multiplied by 60 minutes multiplied by 60 second and once we do do the maths we'll get 2700 coulomb all right 
And in order to find the mass of copper deposited at cathode, we need to um, know the equation. But for now, um, we have from the previous slide, we know that 1 Faraday is equal to 1 mole of electron equal to 9,696,500 So, this charge will refer to 1 mole of electron. But we only have this amount of charges. So, we can make a stoichiometry where here refer to 1 mole. If 2,700 coulomb, we can cross multiply it. So, we will get 0 0.028 mole of electron. So, we can use the mole of electron in order to further understand what's really happening here. So the two, the 0 0.028 mole of electron will be passes through the copper wire from anode into cathode, and the electron here, the electron here is used in order to make product deposited at the cathode. So from the equation, um, we have copper two plus and H2O that is attracted to the cathode. But we will select copper 2 plus because it is lower in the electrochemical series. So it's more positive, easier to be discharged. So from the equation that you have constructed, you know that 2 mole of electron produces 1 mole of copper because we need to, need to find the mass of the copper. However, um, by this by calculating the charge here, you know that you only have 0.028 mole of electron. Okay, so 0.028 mole of electron will then produce 0.014 mole of copper by using the stoichiometry. Now we can find the mass of the copper, which is the molar mass for copper is 63.5 gram per mole. So we can find the mass of the copper deposited by multiplying the mole with the molar mass. So our mole here is 0 0.014 multiplied by the molar mass which is 63.5 gram and lastly we will get 0 0.889 gram. Alright and that is the mass of copper deposited. Now let us look into another example. So for example 2 an electrolysis of molten calcium bromide so molten here, calcium bromide was conducted using a carbon electrode. So first we have to draw a completely level diagram for the electrolysis. For the second part, we have to write the equation that occurs at anode and at cathode as well as the overall reaction. And then we need to find the mass of the calcium form at cathode for the period of one hour with the electric current of 5 ampere. So, for the molten calcium bromide, we know that it occurs at high temperature and no water. So, you have learned this in the 3.3 part 1 of the video. So, if you haven't watched that one, please go back to that one and revise again. Alright, so this is the setup for the molten calcium bromide. So it needs to be in the high temperature, that is why the Bunsen burner is here. So the electrode that we will be using is carbon on both sides, which is at anode and cathode. And our electrolyte here need to be labeled as molten calcium bromide. Alright. And now we need to no, need to write the equation at anode and cathode. So at the molten state we have calcium 2 plus and bromide. Ion. So calcium 2 plus will go into the anode. Meanwhile, the bromide ion here, okay, sorry, the anion, which is the bromide, will go into the anode. Meanwhile, Ca2 plus, which is the cation, will go into cathode. Alright, so Br minus here will undergo oxidation at anode. And calcium 2 plus here will undergo reduction. So anode Br minus will undergo oxidation. Br minus will forming bromine gas. And because it has two bromine atom here, 
So we need to balance it out and releasing two mole of electron. Meanwhile, at cathode, for cal calcium two plus in the unit of liquid uh, in the state of liquid, so four mole ten, it is important to know that it is all in liquid state, not aqueous. All right. So here need to be in liquid, not aqueous because it does not have any water. So calcium two plus plus two, ele two electron forming calcium solid. Now, in order to find the overall cell reaction, two mole of electron can be cancelled out and hence forming two bromide ion liquid plus calcium two plus liquid produces bromine gas and calcium solid. Okay, so that's our overall cell reaction. For part number three, we need to find the mass of the calcium solid deposited at the cathode here. So let's, let's do that in the next page. So in order to find the charge, where we know that mass is directly proportional to the charge, and the charge here we can find by multiplying the current with time in the unit of second. So I here we have 5 and time here is for 1 hour. So six, 1 hour multiplied by 60 minutes multiplied by 60 second. So the charge that we having is uh, 18,000 coulomb. And you know that 96,500 coulomb refers to 1 mole of electron. Hence, 18,000 coulomb, we can find that by doing the cross multiplication and that refers to 0 0.18653 mol of electron. But here, it needs to be in the unit of Faraday. So 0 0.18653 mol basically refers to 0 0.18653 Faraday because 1 mole of electron equal to 1 mole of Faraday. So it's basically the same. So we have answered the first part of the question here. Now we need to find the mass of the calcium produced. So you know that our reduction at cathode involves 2 mole of electron. Calcium 2 plus receives 2 mole of electron to form calcium solid. So we can say that from the equation at cathode, 2 mole of electron produces one mole of calcium solid. However, from the charge that we have calculated, we only have 0 0.18653 mole. So 0 0.18653 mole of electron okay, will be transferred from anode into cathode. From anode here, it will pass this through the copper wire in order to go for Cathode. So that is why we have to compare the mole of electron with the solid that is deposited at the cathode here. So 0 0.18653 mole of electron will be divided into two. We will get 0 0.09326 mole of calcium. And we can find the mass of calcium by doing mole multiplied by its molar mass. So mass of calcium deposited is small multiplied by its molar mass, where the molar mass of calcium is 40.1 gram per mole. Okay, so our mole here is 0 0.03 to 9, 0 0.09326 mole multiplied by 40.1. And once we do the maths, we will get 3.740 gram. All right. So I think that's all for today's video and this basically summarizes for chapter 3. Okay, see you again some other time and see you again in the next chapter. Bye!